starting with this video, I want to talk about results of a back test involving a double moving average market timing model. Uh, the first part was published on May 19th using the NASDAQ 100. Uh, and today I had published uh, another using the S&P 500. So I'll be uh, showing you results of the NASDAQ 100 in this video and then we will move on to the S&P 500 and so on. So my aim in this uh, video series is to point out a sequence of returns risk involved in market timing. Uh, if you had seen my video yesterday, 10 financial lessons from 10 years of blogging, I had talked about in the very first point, I talked about uh, no method, no strategy uh, ever works uh, at all times for all markets and so on. So I want to uh, show you using market timing that uh, this doesn't happen. So first we're going to uh, take it easy and go through a series of steps. So we're going to talk about NASDAQ 100 today. Then in the next video we'll talk about S&P 500 and then we will talk about gold and then move on to the Indian indices. I had already used this double moving average uh, uh, on bond yields and uh, showed that it works reasonably well there. Uh, let's look, look at what happens with NASDAQ 100. So, um, I'm, I'm not going to uh, make any great conclusions in this video. The time is uh, not there yet to do that. Uh, we'll have to complete the full result cycle. So we get to go through a few parts. So uh, I would suggest that you please be patient and uh, wait until the uh, final uh, part is done before you can take this method seriously. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use NASDAQ 100 uh, total returns index in USD. The uh, USD INR conversion doesn't matter because we're just looking at returns uh, for for a systematic uh, investment versus a timing model. In both cases, there will be the forex conversion involved if you are investing from India. So for the debt part, we will use a fixed income instrument offering about 2.8% a year. That's approximately a reasonable um, average return from fixed income in the from the US seg US market from 1999 to 2022 but it's not accurate I mean it's just a approximate about 3% or so so it's not accurate and if you use actual bond yields that may the results may be slightly different but uh, please bear with me that it's it's the simplest that I could find and I'm sticking with that so for the systematic investing what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that a sum is invested in uh, equity and debt, equity being NASDAQ 100, debt being that 2.8% a year uh, fixed fixed income uh, instrument with 50% equity and 50% debt over 5 years, 10 years and 15 years. I, I will of course change this asset allocation later on to 70% equity and 30% uh, debt as well later on. The portfolio will be balanced annually. We are not going to consider any kind of tax and exit load in any uh, uh, method whether it is systematic or tactical investing. Um, the reason for that is the number of rebalancing in systematic investing is uh, once a year. But if you look at the tactical investment, the number of times the switching is made between debt to equity or equity debt, it is actually uh, about one or less than that. So the tax and exit load will, should be more or less comparable to both methods. And that's the reason why I'm not considering it. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the six months moving average and the 12 months moving average of the NASDAQ 100. If the 6 months moving average of the NASDAQ 100 is greater than the 12 months moving average, then all our money will be in equity. We will sell all the debt holdings and put it into equity. All the future investments also will be made in equity as long as this signal is uh, uh, you know, uh, positive. That is 6 months moving average greater than 12 months moving average. But if the six months moving average becomes less than the 12 months moving average, then we will do the opposite. We will sell all equity holdings and put everything into debt. All future investments will be made into debt as long as the six months moving average is less than the 12 months moving average. So that's a simple uh, strategy that we will be uh, using. Now I talked about the number of buy and sell switches. So over five years, um, it is only two with the tactical investing. Whereas if you rebalance, it will be five. Over 10 years, if you rebalance, the switching will be one. Uh, sorry, will be 10, excuse me. 
but it's only about four uh, with the uh, tactical investing so that's why I, I have left out tax and exit loads on both for both and I think it's a reasonable idea so this is one example of a 15 year run so that this is the last 15 years of the Nasdaq and you can see that the tactical is the black line the systematic is the red line and the tactical has done quite well although it's a little more risky you can see that the fall is higher in the tactical now when you look at a thing like small case when you look at the small small case portfolio they show you uh, data like this they are showing you only one run uh, this is it is not enough for you to decide whether it, that uh, small case idea is worthwhile or not because we need to roll over this 15 years over 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 every month and then uh, find out how it has worked so i'm going to roll this over and once you once you do that you will get 98 such runs this is one run i will get 98 such runs of course if you go to snp 500 and so on it will be in thousands but for nasdaq for the available data we get 98 such runs and you can see here there are four panels but let me just focus on the returns uh, we will we'll talk about risk later on this is not my uh, talking about risk is not the uh, fundamental aim here but of course you can see the article and so on generally you can see i mean from the first run itself you can see that the tactical strategy is a higher uh, higher uh, risk possibly higher reward strategy and you can see that uh, if i just open this in the new tab you can see here that over the 98 runs all the 98 runs the xirr of the tactical strategy has been higher than that of the systematic strategy there's a reasonably good gap but this depends on the asset allocation this particular data is for 50% equity and 50% fixed income if i go to 70% equity and 30% fixed income then the gap reduces considerably you can see that the gap has come down so you can see here uh, if i use code here this is for 50% equity and for 70% equity the gap becomes much smaller so it depends the results depends on the asset allocation also so that's very important to understand now this is for uh, five uh, sorry this is uh, sorry for 10 years and you can see 50% equity and 50% debt there is a reasonable outperformance of the tactical strategy and uh, over uh, 70 years uh, uh, again there is reasonable outperformance although the margin of outperformance has come uh, sorry did i say 70% equity i'm sorry <laughs> what am i my, my focus is uh, not spot on so over 10 years 70% equity the outperformance has come down and this is 158 runs because the the duration has come down the number of runs is more is possible again for five years you can see this uh, is, is going to be the same case this time you have 218 runs and you can see over five years 50% equity 50% debt reasonably it does well but not always there are some regions where the tactical strategy uh, doesn't work uh, better than the systematic strategy but it does reasonably but the margin of outperformance again comes down when the equity is increased to 70 percent so this double moving average strategy when we look at nasdaq 100 data alone this looks like a reasonable market timing strategy i had talked about this in the previous uh, episode also uh, when people say the market cannot be timed they are outright lying i mean that's just wrong they're either they don't know what they're talking or they're basically they have not done enough research or they're basically lying or they're just saying something that's convenient the market can be timed whether it is possible behaviorally for an investor to adopt this strategy and time the market that is something nobody can say because behaviorally even sip is difficult for most people to follow that that is the point which the uh, financial industry will never tell you whether it is tactical or uh, uh, systematic everybody everything needs discipline tactical needs higher discipline and discipline is something most investors don't have that's another matter but as a fact it's very important to point out that this strategy at least for nasdaq 100 uh, for the given data for the given asset allocation works reasonably well in the but will it work for all market classes will it work for all asset allocations that's the question that we are actually trying to study so uh, we cannot uh, uh, immediately uh, ring the victory bell and say we have a winner for market timing model no we have just studied the nasdaq 100 let's go on to the s p 500 in the next video and then move on to gold and then move on to indian indices and see uh, where are the positives where are the negatives and what we should be uh, careful about